Today's episode is brought to you by Mars Energy Cream. Mars Energy is a new way to get a boost. Think energy drink, but it's a lotion you rub on. It's caffeine infused and has taurine just like energy drinks do. That's Mars with a Z, energycream.com. What's up, Sons of Montezuma? SDSU is 1-0 with Idaho State coming to town this Saturday. Today, Coach C takes us into the film room to see what the Aztecs must do to get another W. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Sons of Montezuma podcast. Your host, Mateo. This has to be my favorite point of the week. I am sitting here with Coach C. You know, uh, we get a chance to give our reaction to the game and all that good stuff. But anytime I get a chance to talk football with Coach C, it's a pleasure. I get to sit back and learn something. I always learn something. Last week, Coach, you told us exactly how the game plan should be pretty much how the game should go. If we, you know, hold on to the possession of the ball, you know, you know, turn them over. And when we say them, we're talking about Ohio, the Aztecs, as we all know by now, beat Ohio, the Bobcats 20 to 13. Wasn't a high scoring game, but you know, for us that were there, it was an exciting game, man. There was a lot of big plays, a lot of turnovers, you know, exciting touchdown uh, uh, touchdown grabs on from our team. Uh, how, how are you doing today, first off, man? And did you did you have fun watching this game? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't see the game live because I had fantasy football that scheduled right when the game started, but I definitely <laughs> got a chance to watch it uh, soon after it was over with. And um, it was fun. I always, as an offensive coordinator, you know, people always assume that I love to throw that ball around and see high scoring game. I really don't. I really like seeing where it's tough to score. You know, it's a good chess match. And so I really enjoyed the game. I knew Ohio was going to be a tough out. Just, a, I, you know, I, they're a quality football team and uh, coached really, really well. Got quality players. And then they had a lot of experience coming in. A lot of returners coming in. So I expected a real tough, tough football game. And that's exactly how it turned out to be. Um, points did not come easy. And every little mistake that each team made, it was exposed. And, um, you know, high-flying defenses that have a lot of aggression. Two good quarterbacks on both sides. Two good coaching staffs on both sides. And, and it's week one. So you saw a lot of week one type problems and issues that definitely both squads especially the Aztecs, you know, are going to be spending this week to just clean up. And, um, you know, but I enjoyed the game, and I knew if we could find a way to win, this is a quality win against a team that went 10-4 and four last year and were bowl winners uh, against Wyoming. And so these, this program that we just beat, it, it's a quality win for the Aztecs for sure. Us guys watching the game, we, you know, it was a little bit of frustration in that first half. Things weren't moving. Uh, it, there were moments where we there was some nice grabs, some nice runs, but the passing game really wasn't operating on you know full access there. But then once the play of the game, in my mind, the injury to to Curtis Rourke happened, it was like okay, that that kind of changed some things there. But it didn't immediately change for our offense. So, anyways, we want to get into a little bit, and I know uh, you know what what did you what did you walk away from with the offense's performance? I know you're an offensive guy, so I mean, what overall did you did you take from it? Well, you're always going to have issues, and coaches they really don't know. I don't care what your game plan looks like. When you're going into a week one, you have no idea. You're going with your best guess what they're going to bring on the other side of the ball. They've had a whole summer to get prepared for your offense. They had Lindley's play calling style on film, you know, at least enough games to see what they he liked to do with with our quarterback Jalen there. And basically they were going to come, but still you don't know. And you got to make sure everything is going to be on par. And, you know, you're going to have your first game jitters too. And so sometimes you try to do too much. Sometimes you implement too much and, and sometimes you don't implement enough. And I think we struggle there finding our identity, but that, Oh, I've been there, man. You have to, you just really feel like you, you dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's to get prepared for a football game. 
and week one issues come up, you know, guys just are not in the flow of things. And whether it be a front, whether it be quarterbacks kind of forgetting, whether it be a running back messing up on a pass pro deal. And that's what I saw on both sides of the football. And that's what we're going to go over first. This ball. Third down and five. Oh, under oh, pressure and down. The blitz get to him. All out blitz from and, Kurt Maddox's team. Dinged, and he's dinged, Tim. Yep. Works. He's down. Yeah. Piaseu. Cyrus Biaseu, number six, making the play. And yeah, Rourke, yeah, he very, very slow. So you're going to have these miss, uh, these mistakes and mishaps, and you try to clean up as much as possible. But you mentioned this play already, probably the most important play of the game. As far as for them, it really hurt them, helped us, of course. This is a good quarterback, and I hope he's okay. It was, it was a shame that he didn't come back. Um, you never want to see anybody get hurt. This kid's got a future for sure to play on Sundays. And uh, but this is tough. What we bring to the package on a on a weekly basis to offensive coordinators, to offensive line coaches, as far as how do you pass protect versus this three three five? It's a it's a tough puzzle to fix. And when they don't see it every weekend, and you get a few days. You know, it's tough. Now, Ohio had the whole summer, and their defense runs a little bit of the same element that we do. No one runs as good as San Diego State. I think San Diego State has really put their moniker on and who we are, a staple of the 3-3-5, and they really disguise things really, really well here. What is this quarterback looking at, and where can mistakes be made? You can see our defense is lined up, and for those that really don't understand, this is our 3-3-5. Here's our three down linemen. Here's our Will. Here's our Mike, and here is our Sam. These are six total, and they have six blockers here. And we're going to go ahead and present what we call a smack blitz, and you'll see from the end zone view what I mean by that. But what this quarterback needs to do on a third and five issue, or and down, he sees zone right here. He sees a safety on the top of the screen here that's outside the hash. And so he has to be thinking, all right, this might be some kind of disguise of a cover two look where you have both safeties on the hashes. You have a DB that can cover the flat here on a third or five, protect the chains. And this guy is just showing man, but he can go ahead and definitely throttle to a cover two look or just carry until he sees a threat, which can be this running back, and then jump on that. With the safety outside of that hash, a veteran quarterback can say, all right, they're probably trying to set me up. Really what San Diego State is doing a great job up. They're not really showing we're bringing pressure. They're really showing a soft look. Outside of his stance here, our Mike linebacker stance, they're really showing a soft look. That being the case, that's still no excuse. He has to make sure as a quarterback and the center's responsibility has to make sure that they have their six-man protection able to handle a six-man box. And so no matter what pressure is brought to them, they should be able to handle it unless they made mistakes. And in this play, play they absolutely made a mistake that just hurt them and, and it cost them their quarterback. Now, C.J. Harris, good quarterback. I didn't see much of a drop off outside of a few plays when he came in. Um, but, you know, Ohio's going to say we probably win this game with this quarterback. Maybe, maybe not. But the bottom line is you got to protect the quarterback. And I've always said this to young offensive coordinators. The most important thing when you're um, establishing a foundation of what you're going to be offensively, pass protection is the most important. A lot of coaches think it's the run game. No, it's pass pro. You get pass pro down cold where you are great at that, that helps out average quarterbacks, and that helps great quarterbacks become even better. You need to have – pass protection down and here they have a great quarterback for the college level and because you made a mistake on pass protection it cost you a major major player in this game so i'm gonna let this thing play san diego state runs this thing beautifully as far as they execute this pressure in such a great way where they confuse it and we get a free player turns out we get two free players and turns out to be the game or the play that really, like you mentioned earlier, that just kind of, you know, set the tone for the rest of the game for our defense and ignites them. Not that we get excited about seeing a kid get hurt, but boy, when you make a hit like that, you know, that really causes a lot of guys to point fingers. Now, here's the X's and O's of this thing. This is chalkboard football one-on-one. You've got to be great at offensive 
pass protection. You just got to be good at it. And it, again, it is the quarterback's responsibility and the center's responsibility. This tailback here, he has to know who is he, he's responsible for. What you're going to see Ohio do is you never want to see the center and the running back help the same side. What do I mean by that? If this center is going to help out his right guard and the right tackle, these three are going to work together to make sure that these three are taken care of. That means then that these three, the tailback with the left guard and left tackle, have to be responsible for the next three. If it's the other way around, if the center is going to help out the left guard and left tackle, then your running back has to be responsible of helping out the right tackle and the right, I'm sorry, the right tackle and the right guard. All right. You can see his head, the running back's head. He's looking to the right. That's telling me from looking at film, his responsibility to, is to help out these two. And so the center, the left guard, and the left tackle are going to be responsible for the nose tackle to the wheel linebacker to our defensive end on this side. And the running back is going to be working with the right guard, right tackle to, for the mic, the DN, and the Sam backer right here. They don't do it. The running back makes a mistake. I'm going to play it. And then I'm going to pause it here. And what you're going to see is you see the running back step to the same side as the center. And so you got four for three and two against three. Massive mistake by the running back. He's in a not in a scat position. He, what a scat means for those that don't know, if the running back has scat responsibility, he gets to take off for his route right now. Mm -hmm. But if he has a check release, that means he must check his man first to make sure he's not bringing pressure. And if he sees his man drop into coverage, he can do a quick chip and get out as an outlet. Or he can do a check replace where he just ends up replacing the vacant area so that the quarterback can take advantage of that particular play. Unfortunately, this running back for them steps the wrong direction. He's looking in space to see if there's any pressure from that DB coming across. You can see our wheel linebacker who is eyeing this guy. He's going to watch him. And unfortunately, he leaves his right tackle and, and his right guard trying to take care of two. And then the right tackle is confused because then he's going to let go of his guy, not understanding. And all of a sudden you got two free defenders coming in to get a free hit on your quarterback on a very important play where they're on their our side of the football field on a third and five. The sack takes them out of scoring position where they can at least try a, a field goal, one, in a low scoring game, and two, you just lost your quarterback in an unfortunate situation. And again, we hope he's okay. Would hate to see this kid miss more time during the season time and so mistakes like that you just can't have now we find ourselves not too far in this game in the exact situation wow that's pretty good man and that was one of the first things you said last week was that you got to confuse the line as great as the quarterback is and and you know he he definitely showed he he was capable but you got to confuse the line that that's the those are the ones that you got to confuse in order if you want to beat them Absolutely. That's, so this is like a similar situation that we ran into? Yeah. So now this is a similar situation for us now where we're in that same scenario as far as getting a unit of five old linemen and a running back have to be on the same page to protect the quarterback. And uh, they're going to bring a pressure on this play here. And again, the difference is we have a quarterback that gets to go to the huddle for the next play and their quarterback then. So here we are looking at a second and nine, and it's going to be funny. You're looking at this play. We're at the 23-yard line. This is going to be a two-yard game, probably one of the most important two-yard games of the game because you protected your quarterback. And, again, that's the most important thing. Keep your guys healthy. Keep your quarterback clean and where he can get into the huddle the next play, whether it's after a mistake or a good play. The bottom line is you have to establish pass pro. All credit is going to go to our running back here. Keenan Kristen, you're going to watch what he does to this linebacker. Now, they're in a forefront here, but it really is kind of a disguise like our 3-3-5, three, three, where there's their three down linemen here, and then they got a wheel, they got a mic, you know, and this is their Sam backer because they're two tight end set that we have right here. And they're going to bring these guys. They're going to bring all, all six of them, and we're going to have six-man protection going on, and you're going to see – 
the running back correctly does his job, what the Ohio running back did not, and it cost them. Keenan does his job, and watch what he does to this guy. He just folds <laughs> that damn backer. He folds him like a lawn chair in your backyard. I mean, the guy's <laughs> coming full force, and watch this hit. It's a bigger linebacker, bigger kid, and he just folds him. This kid is rocked backwards. He isn't going to remember his name for a couple of plays. It's a great play that saves your quarterback. you got a hat on a hat. Yeah, they're bringing pressure, but you have guys that are in the right responsibility, cleaning up their, their technique to make sure he has a clean pocket. It's one thing, but this running back, Keenan, does a great job. And you might say, well, coach, it only goes for a two-yard gain. Yeah, you got a quarterback going back to his huddle and calling the next play is what you got, you know, instead of, here comes the medics to see if the kid remembers who he is and where he's at, you know? Mm. So we're going to look at this in the back end zone. Look, give you responsibility here of what we got and all line guys. Again, first week, you're going to have your mistakes, but this play, they really do a good job. Keenan in here is going to be working with the left guard and the left tackle center here is going to be working with a right guard and right tackle. And it's going to be working these three, the one technique here, Again, this is your your uh, uh, Will linebacker. This is your Mike linebacker here is what you got. And you got your Sam. So, And then you got the DN. So these three, center, right guard, right tackle, are working these three. The running back is going to be helping out these two. And our left tackle does a great job. You're going to see him take a vertical step because he's not too sure because there's a puzzle here. He doesn't know if this defensive end is going to come or is going to drop because this guy can come or this guy can come. And so whenever a lineman does not know for sure who is going to be coming, it is always wise instead of him jumping out here and opening up an inside lane for him to take a vertical step, get a hand to help out your buddy here, your right guard, get a hand here, but keep your eyes to see who is coming. And he's the guy that he picks. Keenan here's responsibility is to look inside out from the mic here to the Sam backer. If the mic comes, that's his responsibility. And he wants to keep his eye on him. And that's exactly what Keenan does. Does a great job having his eyes in the correct place. Here comes the three. Keenan sees what he's doing. Great vertical step here by Christian Jones. Does a great job. He's staying vertical. His eyes are on the outside. This DN is trying to do a chip to get in. So Christian Jones is doing a great job helping out his, his buddy, his guard right here, the left guard. And he's still in great position to peel off of that while he slows off this defense tackles rush to get to this DN. Center's doing his job taking care of that one technique. Right guard has got the pressure from the wheel linebacker. And that DN, if you will, is being picked up by our right tackle technique can be cleaned up a little bit better but at least his responsibility is right and then you see christian doing his job giving what his quarterback needs so he can deliver Ooh. a massive two-yard gain not because of the yardage that you picked up but because you kept your quarterback clean big big play there in the little things of football now keenan christian is so fast his nickname is hellcat like the car right like the like the <laughs> super fast car and of course the bobcats of ohio so we we you know put it out there on the tweet hellcat versus bobcat well i think we saw who won that one <laughs> yeah he had a good game you know again you're just those are the little things you look for and really if you're a running back the reason why a lot of them don't make it in the on sunday football is because of that pass protection issues you got to know football you got to know fronts yeah. Um, when you understand fronts, there's so much that a running back has to do. And it's 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 a lot. It's a, just a lot. You got to know fronts where pressures can come from, coverages. Do I have a check release? Do I have a check scat? Do I have a check swing? Do I have a check replace? You know, all those are just things that can get into a running back's head where it's a whole lot more than just carrying the ball, looking for the open hole and, and, and being a great runner. You really got to understand the game as a whole. And those veteran running backs helping out the young running backs to make sure that they understand that because it's a big part of football. If you don't know what you're doing in pass protection, we can't play on third down. We can't. You're too much of a liability for the safety of the quarterback. 
and for the chance for the play, especially on the on their third and fives and third and sevens, to have a chance to execute. Hey Aztec Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to our channel. And then, stop on over to SonsMontezuma.com, where you can find more SDSU sports, news, articles, podcasts, and the most unique Aztecs-inspired merchandise in our original NIL shop. This year's Sons of Montezuma NIL team features quarterback Jalen Maiden, receiver Makai Shaw, running back Keenan Kristen, defensive lineman Garrett Fountain, and linebacker Cooper McDonald. With every purchase, you directly support our student-athletes. So make sure to stop over at SonsOfMontezuma.com today. Go Aztecs! Speaking of 3rd and 7, here we are on 3rd and 7, and this is right after the 2-yard game. Okay, so there we are at the 21-yard line. This is third and seven. And a couple of issues here. Our X receiver here, Christian's right here, Keenan, comes out. We're in an empty set. Now, an offensive coordinator and a quarterback, first thing you need to establish, when you hear that call in the huddle, that it's going to be an empty left in this case. It's an empty set. Immediately, you got to have your radar up that this is a big potential for pressure to come your way. Defense season empty. That means there's only five blockers. Are they going to bring more than what we can block, especially on a third and seven where the defense wants to go ahead and force a quick throw? They don't mind if you complete the ball as long as it, you don't get the first down and all. And so the O-line has to be uh, uh, alerted to that and realize that. The center has to be alerted to that. This quarterback has to be alerted to that. And, you know, Lindley is telling him, Hey, hey, watch and check your pressures here. So how can we get a pre-snap to be alerted? Are they going to bring pressure? Well, the first thing that Jalen's going to be looking at, are there any safeties? That's the big hint. If there's no safeties, if he's down low, pressure's coming. Okay, and I got five. Now, where's that pressure coming from? And the center needs to know where that pressure's coming from because you can show pressure and not bring pressure, but this center better be right. This quarterback better be right. And either the quarterback's given a lucky call, which is telling the center, you're helping out the left side, okay? Or he's given a Ringo call, which means you're helping out the right side. And so Jalen can make that call, get an empty set, you call the play, and then he can tell the center, or the center can alert, this is the side I'm going to help out with. That way, the guards and the tackles know if we're getting help or not. You can see the safety, the single high safety. He's over here to the trip side. So Ohio, really, again, good coach team. They're going to know, okay, if the quarterback sees this, then he's freeing him up. So most likely this guy is going to come. So that's going to tell a center nine times out of ten, okay, I better help out this right side to watch these three. But they've really balanced it out well where you have this guy as well. Okay, and these two have to take care of these two. But again, we only have five. So if they bring six, we got to get rid of that ball because someone's coming in free. And you always want to make sure you take care of the inside guys before you take care of the outside guy. That we tell the quarterback, that's your guy right there. But the big problem that I saw with this play from the very beginning, we don't do too good of uh, protecting it. But you see this on the clock on the bottom of the screen. It says eight seconds left. We had our X getting late to his position. and a center and a quarterback need time to see and assess the situation. And when you have to run to the formation late, you don't have time to dial that up, to get an audible, to change the protections. And so that's a week one issue that you know our boys are going to work, Coach Lindley and staff. They're going to really make sure to kind of preach that message all week. Get the play, get out of the huddle. And sometimes it's the coach's fault. I've been there. Man, it's a third down. I get the call in late. And I, that's when you make a note for yourself. Coach, get your call in sooner, you know, and, you know, I've done that. Trust me, I've done that. So you don't have to call a timeout or put your boys in a bad situation. Don't know what happened here, but the bottom line is we're snapping it. We feel like we're being hurried and they don't bring six. They bring four and we're confused 
and we got two free guys, and we have to throw the ball away. Little things like that, those are the week one issues that you just can't have. And it contributes to a, a game like this where points are premium. Yeah, it's great to get the field goal. In fact, I don't even think we got the field goal. I think we missed it here. But if you get your protections down right, then you have a chance to put seven on the board. Those pre-snap reads got to have the time to to give the quarterback those pre-snap reads, man. Very interesting stuff. You know, when you're watching the game live and you see a an errant pass like that and everybody always automatically just, oh, man, well, what's the quarterback doing? Well, it's more than that. There's a lot of things that go into it. And pass protection, that's the name of this name of this episode. Yeah, and it's and it, and it got us again here. 16 seconds left. It's first and 10. This time we have six man protection. They've got two safety high looks. So that tells a quarterback, I should have plenty of protectors to whatever you bring, Ohio. We got six to, to take care of it. And so right away, we should be fine. Now he can adjust pass protection, but again, just tiny little mistakes. And this time our running back doesn't do a good job of being on the same page here. And these are the things, again, what are we going to be working on this week as you're trying to get ready for a game that on paper you should really have an easy win? But you know what? Coaches can't think that way, and players can't think that way. You can't think like fans. These are the kind of things that you bring up to your players saying, listen, if we don't clean this up, we're going to be in a dogfight, yeah. you know, and I don't care who you're playing, you know, and, and they practice too, and those kids are on the other side. They're good football players. I don't care where you're from. And so we cannot afford ever to put ourselves in a consistent position where you're hurting yourself. 16 seconds left, first and 10. And they're showing pressure. And they're going to bring pressure. And we have six to the block, but there's two guys that are just coming in free. And again, it's the same thing where we're just not on the same page where we need to be. I'm going to show that again here. So what do I mean by that? If the center and the running back are going to the same direction, that's a problem. This case here, our running back steps to the right. So our center should really be working against these three, helping out these two. And then these three should be taken care of by our right guard and our right tackle in the back. If the center ends up and he points, you see it earlier, he points to this guy. Don't know what the center said. He might be telling Kristen, you know, Keenan, hey, you got that guy. Or he might be saying, this is my guy. And if your running back doesn't hear that, that's a problem. But it's the quarterback's responsibility to make sure these guys are all on the same page. You know, to me, I, I'm calling this 41 uh, protection here, just telling the running back, hey, you're helping out the right side and the center, you're helping out the left side. That's got to be clear with these guys. Unfortunately, for this situation, this guy's going to come in free and you have a running back trying to think that he's got this guy. And you see our right tackle get to him. And so you have two guys kind of on the same side, and you got a center that's not too sure, or maybe not. And that hesitation right there, luckily for us, Keenan shows some athletic ability. I'm sorry, Jalen shows some athletic ability and uh, makes a little bit of a play, but it, it destroyed the, the play from happening. But again, those are the little things as coaches. You put little footnotes there in, the, in your call box that these are the things that have to be a priority during this week of preparation that we got to clean up pass protection as far as communication and responsibility. And when you don't have that, you mentioned earlier about the pass game just seemed to have its little hiccups throughout. Well, a lot of that is stemmed because pass protection is not as clean as you would like it to be. And that's the last thing you want a quarterback to even think about. You want him to be comfortable that everything's established the way you want when it comes to pass pro. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. I hope everybody who's watching is learning and, and, you know, just get, getting your, uh, getting your uh, coach's eyes checked just a little bit. Cause this next game against Idaho state, you know, we're all expecting this one to be, you know, route, but last year it was actually a very competitive game uh, going into halftime. So like you said, I mean, if you don't get those things, improved upon in practice week you can't count anybody out and not with this new coaching staff they have at idaho state we don't know exactly what they're going to be running so there's always that that mystery to it as well new staff 
new philosophies, new players. I think they have a over over 50 new players on on their roster. So you just never know. But you know, watch watching this against a, a legit Ohio team. Uh, you know, it's, it's encouraging to know what what they need to work on. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to hopefully depend on their mistakes would give you a win. You want to just execute. And uh, even when they execute their side, but you just execute better, that's when you feel good as a program. And that's what you want. Um, You know, and I think in this game against Ohio, and I thought Ohio played great. I think they had some opportunities. I know that flight home, they kicked themselves. If this would have happened or this would have happened, really hurt. To me, the play of the game outside of, uh, their quarterback getting hurt. But really, I tell you, I got to give a shout out. Game ball has to go to Sedarius Barfield. This guy by himself made tremendous plays. He had that big deflection in the end zone when they were about to score that led to their first three points that could have went for a touchdown, but he knocks the ball down and passed the fence. Here's 55 seconds before halftime. They're at our 19 yard line. It's third and six. And if, this thing goes incomplete. Well, now it's it's a 9-3 ball game, you know, and things are probably a little bit different here. And Sedarius does a great job. I mean, he has several plays in this game. Well, I'm shaking my head. He's the pinpoint man right here against their pinpoint player, the big tight end that they got. He reads, screen, sits with his man, and then he comes up with a pick. They get no points, and this leads to our offense going down the field right before halftime. And a big shout-out to Coach Hoke for going for it when he did to get the touchdown right before halftime. I wouldn't have done that. I would have, like, all right, take your first read and kick the field goal. Let's go into halftime 6-6 six, six and whatever else. But, you know, he uh, he rolled the dice, and we got points for it. But Barfield really gave a sense of just – Man, the defense, again, rises to the occasion. This gentleman here, man, Barfield, he made a play coupled with the defense. You know, later on in the second half, he makes another play that I was just blown out of my mind of what kind of game he was having. But this interception is as big as any, as as big as any right here. And this last one I'm going to show of him just to give him his due um, because it was just special special his performance that was that was one of the that was one of the things i walked away from this game where the team captains all stepped up very very big and sedarius barfield one of the senior captains on this team and he definitely showed why oh and just huge here's another situation again they're deep in our end zone our red zone excuse me 15 yard line third and six i think it's a great play call here by ohio they're moving the ball on us. We're a little frustrated because we're not scoring as much as we would like. They're frustrated because they missed a couple of fades in the end zone that they felt like they should have hit. So you can sense that there was frustration on both sides of the of the football field. But Ohio, I think, just had that little bit of confidence going offensively. It's like we're getting things. Let's just let's just execute. And to me, great call by their coaching staff um, and Sedarius. So what he does here, phenomenal. If he gets drafted on next, you know, pretty soon, this is going to be a play we're going to see on April that they will show of just look at the makeup speed by him. Here he is on the edge. He's going to come all the way in. He's being blocked. They are going to call a reverse. He was the force, meaning what that means is he's the guy responsible for the outside to turn everything back inside. Well, as the force, He comes in thinking he reads the play, and it's an uh-oh, and he rechanges his direction, and he doesn't go after the runner. He goes to where he's at or where he's going, and he's all about beating him to a point to get him to turn back in, and boy, does he do it. He gets to that point and just causes that guy to turn back in, Mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. Goes for a three-yard gain on a third and six. And it's just a wow play. A play just a that, smart, smart play, smart defensive play, positioning himself. That's just as good as it gets as far as, okay, found yourself in a bad position, and he made up for it, understood his responsibility, 
get this play to turn back in, does a great job. And it's the difference that that kid, if, if he, who knows if that guy doesn't walk in, in the end zone, you know, or at least get the first down and give them a fresh new set of downs. It's little things like that, that Ohio's going to be going back just like, man, we need to clean up. And it's going to be little things like that, that the little things on the offensive side of the ball that prevented us from getting the points we needed, but also the little things that we did do right that preserved the points that we did get. And in a low scoring game like this turned out to be, every point really mattered against a quality football team like Ohio. Tip my hat off to them. We weren't expecting this to be easy. Definitely it wasn't easy. And thankfully, we just did a little bit better than what they did. And I expect that because we're a quality football team. We're a quality football program. We're well coached. And we're going to have our mistakes. It's week one. But those are the little things that you know that the Aztec football staff is going to make sure that they really try to iron out this week to make sure we don't have the same kind of wrinkles that we had to make a tough, tough game closer than really what it should have been. You know, I thought we should have won a little bit more, but you know what? A win's a win. You take it. They're tough at this level. It's tough to win at the D1 level. And so you just, you're just thankful for all of them. That's for sure. Very cool. Very cool. That's good stuff, dude. I like that you picked the plays that weren't necessarily the, just the the touchdowns, you know, the the payoff plays. Like this is the stuff that really, you know, shaped the game and and led to those touchdowns and, you know, the turnovers and the pass protection and, you know, stopping a guy from running around the edge. I mean, these are the plays that really uh dictated the the frustration and and caused all the you know, the, our defense just played amazing all game long. I mean, so many new faces, but that leadership, like from Barfield, uh, you know, guys like Cody Moon, 11 tackles, uh, pressures from Vi, Vi Cajo, pressures from, you know, Zyrus, and, and of course, Cooper McDonald. This defense just continued to battle all game long and, and knocked their quarterback out to begin with. So got to tip my hat to this defense, this Kurt Maddox defense for sure. Just a quick point uh, to give Coach Lindley his due. You know, he was really trying to find a rhythm there, and uh, it can get frustrated, frustrating as a coach. But to show you how versatile he is, he went to this delta formation late in the third quarter and really used this particular formation uh, throughout this drive. That led to points. It led to big runs. And uh, what it did is it balanced out the blocking assignments uh, for the front five because you have a seven man blocking scheme with these two here. And you know, where you have the fullback on this side and the tight end lining up in the backfield. And then you're getting in a tight formation and it really had to balance out Ohio. Ohio likes to disguise things, but when you come into a formation like this, and I don't remember us even running this last year, maybe we did, but the first time I saw this formation is in 96 playoffs, the Cowboys in Carolina but that's literally what they did. They put their tight end and fullback in the back. And uh, I was actually going to show a clip of that, but I was like, nah, you guys are just going to have to trust me. Right when I saw it, I used to utilize this formation when we felt like, you know, they were giving us certain looks that we couldn't really get a hold of. And what this does is it really balances things out and it makes sure that these guys end up having to become gap protectors because they can't leverage inside or outside anymore because both these interior blockers are inside the tackles and you can run so many different things. And Coach Lane has shown that versatility. So as a play caller myself, it was kind of refreshing to see because sometimes it's just not going well. Sometimes your zone concepts, your power concepts, uh, counters, you know, just, you know, they, they're they leveraging it well. They're beating our guy. And then all of a sudden you throw something like this at them where you can run leads, where you can run inside zone, you can run stretch, and you can definitely run uh, counters and, and powers off of this. And when you have tight personnel like this with the receivers, you can run reverses out of that. It really gives it a different where all of a sudden the defenders have to say, hey, we need to stay home until we know exactly what's going on. And so Coach Lindley, to his credit, tip my hat off him, to him for this. In a game where I'm sure he had his frustrations and felt like he can do things, he really showed a lot of versatility here where it led to points. This drive led to points because he made a, a wrinkle during the game. Probably did this at halftime. 
And it's something that was in their his contingency box, if you will, meaning if this doesn't work during the game, maybe we can go to this. And that's what he did. And, uh, you know, so it was fun to watch as they went stretch, as they went counter, as they went quarterback power, you know, and lead off of this. And it, it led to points, like I said, and that's big. That's really big. So tip my hat off to him, showing that kind of uh, versatility on his part. We kept our defense rested on the on the sideline because they were playing so well. Took time off the clock. And I think this was a four-minute drive here. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I just know it led to points. And it was good stuff. And I think that's when they put in Armstead. And it was just really a heavy smash mouth type football that they came with. And uh, that was fun to watch. It was really good to see that. Definitely, definitely. Good rhythm on that drive. I, I like how they're using Moose on some of those, you know, like you said, those quarterback quarterback runs. I mean, he's got that big body and uh he he's uh he's got some good escapability out there in the pocket already to begin with. So yeah. I'm really excited to see that from Coach Lindley and uh we'll see how it goes moving forward against Idaho State this Saturday, 7 30 kickoff time at Snapdragon Stadium in San Diego. It's our second home game uh three to start the season in a row three home games so ohio idaho state this week and of course us as fans we got to look ahead ucla you know we want to be two and oh facing the bruins and bringing them down here to san diego and these things they got to get cleaned up but uh i'm confident that they will and uh man it's going to be exciting if we, if we can come out of this three game stretch you know making making these adjustments and and feeling good going into the the end of non-conference play and in the conference play I like our chances yeah we, everybody knows that these are called trap games and you, the coaches are really going to have to work overtime to make sure the mindset doesn't settle in for our players that you know when you get to UCLA when you get to UCLA it's great for fans to talk about coaches <laughs> And this is where you really got to be a little bit more of a pain in the neck to players because you really just got to demand focus. You got, and a lot of times, a lot of lazy practices happen in weeks like this because the guy just, guys just don't take things as serious as they should. So when you have mistakes the week previous, that's good for a coach. It's good to have mistakes during a win because you act extra mad. You throw the remote control across the room during film time, you know, to get their attention that you just won't accept any type of relaxed, you know, approach to any play. Because as Ohio found out, and again, we hope the kid's okay, but one little mistake can end a kid's season and you definitely don't want that. And I hope what we see come Saturday it's just good, clean execution. As much as I like seeing Jalen do his thing with his legs, I really want to see him sit in that pocket and just really become like that postman where he's just delivering package after package after package and letting our skills eat a little bit and where it looks smooth and getting in the habit. Hopefully, I hope to see him pointing out, where's the mic, handling the protections, making sure the running back and the center are on the exact same page understanding where the side adjustments and the hots are going to be, be a quarterback here. And when necessary, he can become that athlete that he's been so good at, whatever else. But just where, just really show some consistency, because I'm telling you, come the week after that, where you're looking at those Bruins now, none of us like them, but they're going to be ready. And they look at us as step, you know, brothers and all that stuff, little step brothers, you know, baby, whatever. And they don't want to lose to us here in the 619 area code. You know, they don't want that. And so that would be a big win for us. But we can't go in hoping. We got to go in where we just feel like, all right, we're a well-oiled machine. Let's do what we do. And if we execute, we're going to find ourselves in that game and, and, you know, and beat these guys. But first things first, let's take care of business this Saturday. Focus only on on this Idaho State team. And, uh, you know, I just want to see clean execution. That's really what I want to see. Well, I'm ready for this game. I'm ready for the rest of the season to keep going. Coach C, we appreciate your time, man. This was great stuff. All you listeners and watchers, make sure you are liking and subscribing on YouTube and, of course, Spotify or anywhere else you listen to your podcast. Coach C, we'll see you next week, man. Looking forward to it. Let's go get a Mastix. Appreciate it, Mateo. All right. Sunsmonzuma.com. Go Aztecs. Yo, 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 yo. Just win, baby.